Pisa Cathedral Bell Tower is well known worldwide as a Pisan Leaning Tower. Pisa Cathedral consists of three buildings, Cathedral itself, the Bell Tower and Baptisteria. Here you can see the Baptisteria. The cathedral also looks majestic. It's interesting that on some stones in the walls you can see some Roman texts. So some marbles were used from older constructions. Unfortunately, the Baptist area is currently closed. Gates of the cathedral are just a work of art. Inside the cathedral there are plenty of renaissance painting, sculptures are also very realistic. Here you can see the technology are taking over, so electric candle will light for some time after you drop a coin. Card payment is not supported so far. Pisa Cathedral is a medieval Roman Catholic cathedral dedicated to the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. Construction of the cathedral began in 1063. The cathedral includes various stylistic elements, classical, Lombard, Emilian, Byzantine and Islamic, reflecting the international presence of Byzant merchants at that time. The church was erected outside of Pisa, early medieval walls, to show that Pisa had no fear to be attacked. The current structure is a result of numerous restorations. They were carried out during different eras. The pulpit by Giovanni Pisano is indeed unique, combining so many styles and epochs. I still wonder how they did allow it to be in the church. Besides of a naturalistic style of sculptures, some of them has direct relation to an ancient Roman Greek religion, specifically the sculpture of Hercules.
Seems like some columns are represented by ancient gods and some by angels. So probably it was an attempt to overcome the antagonism in between Christianity and ancient beliefs and to have them aligned as a basis for a current by the time. Pretty typical for Renaissance. There is also Medici coat of arms over the gates, probably after Florence took over the Pisa. I'm getting into the Pisa tower. In the middle you can see the device which is showing how much the tower is leaning right now. The construction of the tower occurred in three stages over almost 200 years. Those stones of foundation were laid in 1172. The tower began to sink after construction had progressed to the second floor in 1178. In other words, almost right after the beginning of construction. This happened because of the mere 3 meter foundation was set in weak, unstable subsoil. The construction was paused for about a century as during that time the Republic of Pisa was almost continuously engaged in battles with Genoa, Lucca and Florence. Surprisingly this was for the better. This gave time for underlying soil to settle. Otherwise the tower would almost certainly have toppled. Take a look at the stairs, you can see how loved this place is by tourists. It's believed that Galileo Galilei made the different experiments on the tower, specifically that he dropped two cannonballs of different masses from the tower to demonstrate that their speed of descent was independent of their mass. On the other hand, this can be still only a legend. Another legend is about US Army surgeon who was impressed by the beauty of the cathedral and tower and thus refrained from ordering the artillery to strike, thus sparing it from the destruction. There were numerous efforts to restore the tower to a vertical orientation or at least to keep it from falling over. Most of these efforts failed, some worsened the tilt. Still it was important to keep the current tilt due to the role that this element played in promoting tourism in Pisa. Starting in 1993, 870 tons of lint counterweights were added, which straightened the tower slightly. The tower, the cathedral and baptistery and also cemetery 
are included in the Pisa del Domo UNESCO World Heritage Site. Though the tower is leaning, it has survived at least four strong earthquakes since 1280. Interesting that this was also due to the soft soil, same that caused the linen and brought the tower to the verge of collapse, helped it to survive. From the top you can see the cathedral, all the Pisa and surrounding landscapes. I'm going down towards the cemetery. The Campo Santo, also known as Campo Santo Monumentale or Camposanto Vecchio is located in the northern edge of the cathedral square. Campo Santo can be literally translated as holy field because it is said to have been built around a shipload of sacred soil from Golgotha brought back to Pisa from the Third Crusade by Ubaldo Lanfranchi, Archbishop of Pisa in the 12th century. Alleged claims that the bodies buried in that ground will rot in just 24 hours. The burial ground lies over the ruins of the old baptistery of the Church of Santa Riparata. That church once stood where the cathedral now stands. The construction of this huge Gothic cloister was begun in 1278. The cemetery was only completed in 1464. I have noticed monument of Fibonacci. This surname should be well known to all who studied math. Bonacci, also known as Leonardo Bonacci, Leonardo of Pisa, was an Italian mathematician from the Republic of Pisa, considered to be the most talented Western mathematician of the Middle Ages. Fibonacci traveled around the Mediterranean coast, meeting with many merchants and learning about their systems of doing arithmetics. He soon realized the many advantages of Hindu-Arabic system, which, unlike the Roman numerals used at that time, allowed easily calculation using a place-value system. In 1202 he completed Liber Apache, which popularized Hindu-Arabic numerals in Europe. 
Fibonacci is thought to have died between 1240 and 1250 in Pisa. It seems like initially the building was not meant to be a cemetery, but a church called Santissima Trinita, but the project changed during the construction. The Campo Santo contained a huge collection of Roman sarcophagi, but now they also a collection of Roman and Etruscan sculptures and urns are saved in Museum of Westreport. The walls of the vast structure were covered in over 2,600 meters squared of frescoes. They are dedicated to a different Bible scenes, for example, the Last Judgment, and some historical scenes, but also some are dedicated to understanding of the world. There are two more museums around the Pisan Tower to visit. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you the next time.